Hello, my name is Peter LeBlanc and we'll briefly show you an example of ripple adders in binary logic and in ternary or free valued logic. On the right hand side is the binary ripple adder and on the left side is the ternary ripple adder. They represent circuits so rather than using the terminology in binary like 0 and 1, I use colors. Dark green is uh, off or 0 and bright yellow is on or 1. On the left hand side is the ternary logic <coughs> circuit or the results. You don't see the underlying circuits but imagine that you see LEDs that are controlled by, uh, by the circuits and if you have dark red it's off uh, and then the LEDs, the LEDs can have two states. It can have bright red or bright green. And on the right hand side you see how the functions are controlled of the LEDs. Um, in a ripple adder you create a residue which is the modulo 2 addition or the XOR function, that's this line, and the carry it's formed by the end function. That's this one. You have to study this. Stop the video and look at it. And that's the bottom line. So I have, here we add the uh, the two terms that are added together. Then you will see a first in the first round a intermediate residue appearing, and an intermediate carry. And the term ripple adder is uh, is caused by the next round where you see that if there is a carry then it may propagate along these terms, these rounds, until in the end we have the final results. Imagine adding 1 to 999. If you do this properly you have to add a 1 every time in a new decimal position until you have 1000. That's called the ripple in the carry in an addition. And here we do that with the ternary logic um, and you see here the functions that control it and what you see immediately without doing anything is that in ternary logic we require fewer rounds of addition and thus fewer circuits. And here you see what happens in the um, in the first round there's a residue in, in radix 3 I have to say and then a carry and then there's another round and there's another round and as a simple example let's add one with one well, I think we can do that and just to see what happens if we see calculate you see the both with the same clock speed results so use one with one red on red is green and here one and one is um, two and so what happens here is there's a carry and the carry becomes the end result. So this already is the end result. There is no carry. But if you have other numbers, it may continue until the results come here. Uh, but in this case, there is no ripple, almost no ripple. And you see also that uh, in this case, um, it's in one round. The end result is the bright green, which is two. So one and one is two. So that's that's all right. Um, let's reset and let's add <clears throat> one and two and see what that does. And you see that a carry is formed here, one carry. In this case, um, there is no carry, and the result is determined immediately. We know already, of course, also how we uh, have to create this ripple. For instance, if we take in binary 3, 1 and we add 1 and look at the right hand side you see the uh, the carry rippling through each round. You see that? And here is the final result. No matter, here was no ripple but you, know, you have to design a ripple adder for its uh, its maximum ripple so you still have to do it but no matter what, you see that the uh, requirements for circuitry in the ternary design is less, is smaller than the binary design. 
just to show you that you also can have a propagation of a ripple in the ternary case let's take 26 and add one and you see that that creates a ripple in the ternary case and you see this here the ripple going through and in this case the binary result was already determined this uh, program was designed in uh, an old version of Visual Basics <coughs> uh, basic um, it doesn't run anymore on Windows 7 even so I won't post it but if you want a copy of it send me an email to admin at ternarylogic.com and I'll send you a copy thanks